And good morning, folks. We're in 131 angstrom, so you can see the flashes on both sides of the sun from Earth's perspective. Since the right side is departing to the far side of our star, we're mainly focused now on the incoming northern active region as the primary eruption threat to Earth. When we come over to spaceweathernews.com, we find a noticeable but still weak crest in solar flaring activity into C range. While that is bigger than previous days, it's puny given the delta class magnetism of this sunspot. You see blue and red packed close together near the rear of the sunspot, and that makes it dangerous, or at least it would be if not for the Earth facing solar quiet. The sun diving comets are one of the few things we've seen set off the sun these last few years, and last night we saw a fiery rock incoming. Unfortunately, they stopped updating SOHO a few minutes later. By now, the comet must be darn close to the sun. Solar wind at Earth is fluctuating within normal range, maybe a touch above average density, but Earth's magnetic field is quite stable. Third gamma ray burst in the last four days came in this morning, been quite a few the last ten. There's a coronal hole situation going on. As you can see, they are Earth-facing starting today. The earthquake watch remains high as that area that surged to red yesterday had only a moderate shift overnight. Let's come to the story of the day. NASA confirms one side of a very contentious climate issue. Not only has the ice extent in Antarctica been record high, but the snow cover is actually outmassing the ice loss from melting in the western sheet. As of now, the notion of disappearing polar ice has no merit in the southern hemisphere. We've also got new images from Enceladus. More images will be coming over the next couple days of our icy system neighbor. We already know that the worst ever storm for the Middle East is on its way, but now I want to show you its power in a different way. Let's go over to the earth wind map and elevate to the jet stream level of the atmosphere and look at the temperatures. Then, when we zoom in on the Indian Ocean, we see that the warmest part of the atmospheric layer is right over that cyclone. This is because all of the air that gets sucked in at ground level pulls up through the eye and then shoots outward at the jet stream. Brings the heat up in just that location. Folks, that Texas motorist had a really bad day, but maybe not as bad as this guy who ended up floating down the flash flood waters. Flooding is expected to continue. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. It is Saturday, so you have a new Fly on the Wall episode coming today in a few hours, and you've got a new Deeper Look episode from last night, episode 86, both under premium. By the way, that is also where you can get the book, Observing the Frontier. Just click the image of it and pretty much all of our websites. Our top viewer locations today illuminate the cause of the Texas flooding that will head eastward further in a few hours. Also, the cause of some significant flood potential in both Europe and Australia. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.